Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. Today we are gonna be piecing together Cinderella. So I literally just cut this um, this morning and I haven't done anything like I, other than taking it off the mat. Um, this is all I have. So let's piece it together and I'll show you how I do my off the mat assembly. Um, but you can see behind me, I'm so excited. I just finished the video of putting um, Ariel on the foam board. So you can see she's propped up. She's right next to Belle and right next to Jasmine. And you can kind of see what I did was, I normally like to do my off the mat at 30 inches. So you can kind of see like they're all of the same height, but um, Belle and Ariel are different sizes. Let me see what I wrote down. Ariel is 24 inches and Belle is 24 inches because next to Jasmine at 30 inches, she actually has her torso. And so I felt that, you know, if you're gonna do a princess party, all the faces should be proportionate, right? With, um, and should match with the others. And I feel like right now they really look good. And so I kept the same theme. With Cinderella, I did her at 26 inches. So I did 24, 24, that's Ariel and Belle, 26 for Cinderella and 30 for Jasmine. All right, so let's do this. Um, I always do the black first. So let's, and I have my laptop over here that has the image like ready for me to both see her assembled and also how I cut the image so that we're not spending a lot of time trying to figure out where pieces go. So here is my black background. So obviously that's her head. Um, these are the bottom small pieces. Um, and that was pretty easy. So that's her. So what I do now is I will flip everything over and tape from the back side. So, and you may laugh, but I'm really bad at putting together puzzles. So that's why I just do it piece by piece like that. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to tape in pairs. The way I cut this was the head. I was so excited. The head was one piece. Um, so there's no taping that down. Um, so what I will do is I like to tape in pairs. So I'm gonna tape the mid section, the middle portion first. And I just wanna make sure that I'm lined up, you know, the, exactly. And that also I am pushing up against the two pieces of cardstock so that it is as flush as can be. So I will get my regular scotch tape. One hand I'm holding down, the other hand I'm pushing it against the other piece. And then I'm gonna use my thumb to kind of keep that and then tape it down. And then I'm gonna do it again over here. It is not that important on this piece because there aren't that, um, I believe almost 90% of the seams are covered by what's going on top. So she's gonna look virtually seamless. Like it's, I'm so excited. I hope she is everything that I expect her to be. Um, okay, so same thing, these two pieces, I want to um, just push up as much as I can. Like I even lifted this up to push it against it and then put my other finger down. And of course I got tape on myself. Okay. Oh my gosh, it's gonna happen. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that's down. Now I'm gonna glue the two, you know, the four pieces together, but you know, they're in pairs and they're already taped up. So same thing, I'm just going to lift up this whole piece, push it against that one, and try to get the four corners together right here and then I'll tape the rest afterwards. And I still push even though it's like already taped up. I just wanna make sure. And you see like even this piece, it's almost all taped down, but I just wanna make sure. Okay, so now these four pieces are together. We just gotta put her head on and Again, just push up as much as you can.
and also Cinderella I haven't seen. I haven't seen many of these movies. I really need to sit down and watch it because everyone loves them from the comments. Um, and I mean, I know the general story. <laughs> All right, so here we have the black background. Now what I do is, I don't tape while I'm doing this. What I will do is I just wanna put down all her pieces to make sure that everything is lined up properly, it's all balanced and even, and then check to see if I'm missing any pieces. So, all right. I did keep her eyes together so that I don't have to think about which eye is which, but. Okay, so this is her face. I love it. Um, so I'm just gonna put it down. I don't know where it goes exactly. Um, let me pull up, sorry, the image again so I can see it while we're doing it. Um, and I'm also going to show you right now the cardstock that I used. Um, that doesn't make sense, does it? No. Because everything has a black outline. Okay, there we go. So it's down here a little bit. Here's her. So this whole section right here, the seams covered, except for this eye, but I think we're gonna lay over the eye over there, so it'll be good. Okay, so this is her big shoulder. It's like a shoulder pad. Um, okay, this is the other one. And then this is also her hair. So I, all my glitter, I do use glitter cardstock. It's so pretty and it doesn't shed um, and it's sturdy. So I try to buy it whenever it goes on sale. That's my tip. Um, let's see, so we have this piece here. Oh, the other tip, I saw I left this on on purpose. So the blue, the, um, the blue and red glitter cardstock from Cricut for whatever reason, I feel like it must be thicker. It never cuts perfectly. Um, usually it's, you know, if, if I know I'm cutting blue and this time I forgot, but every time I cut blue and red, after one cut, I pull out the blade and I clean it, either with the tin foil or I just blow on it and use my hand and like wipe off all the shedding. It doesn't shed a lot, but it sheds enough to mess up the cut on the next one. So um, what I do with this white piece is I will tear it off and then I will take my um, knife and I will cut at an angle and I'll be quiet so you can hear the actual scraping. And I do it at an angle so that I don't, I'm not um, trimming off any glitter. I'm just trimming off the white in the background. Okay, so there is that piece. And also I just noticed it on this one. So I'm just going to, it, and it only needs a little bit and then you can even just push it back and it's fine. And I will definitely take a close up of this, um, a close up picture. And I also do a close up video because I think you can really see the shimmering um, on it and it's just gorgeous. And I love showing off this, the no seams. Like people look at it and they're like, wow, where, where are all your cuts? So, okay. Um, so she only has like a little, and I love this image because if you followed along, I did not have to slice anything of color. The only thing we sliced was the black background. So it is seamless. If we can cover up the black background where it was cut, then it's seamless. Okay, the mouth, same thing. It has that little extra piece. So all I do is I rip off the excess. I look at it just to make sure. I mean, this one looks pretty good. I didn't really need to do too much. So that's her teeth. Um, here's her neck. I am considering doing like a blue choker because there is a seam coming down right here and I was surprised that she's not wearing anything. I, it just seems weird, but all right. Um, this little piece is her hair. Um, her little tendrils. And it's covering up almost all the seams. I almost wish that I cut this one 
Maybe we should have made sure that it was like a, around her nose. But we'll see how the eyes come out. All right, we have earrings. And I usually stay true to the actual image because I don't, I want the kids to just recognize and love it. Um, I'm missing a little blue piece. That's okay. All right. Um, oh, these are her eyes. And I can see the white on this. And you'd, I didn't notice it as I was placing it down, but um, against the black, you can see it right away. So I'm just gonna trim this really quickly. And it's always the small pieces and it's like much more difficult to fix these, but Still so worth it. Okay, I think I'm good. Okay, her lips. And I try to do the lips a different color too. I mean, from the picture it was clear that she didn't have the same color lips as Belle and Jasmine. But um, I do try to, you know, just think about your overall look, right? She's really starting to come together. So I think maybe the blue piece is probably still on here. It is still on here, I'm not missing it, yay. Okay. I was missing this side for her little hair. Okay, <laughs> I'll show you in a second. All right, so all I have left are her eyes. So let's see if I could tell which is which the left versus the right. Okay, so that piece looks bigger, so I think that's her, this is her left eye for us. Okay. And I will show you what this looks like. Um, her eye does almost cover up the seams. And then this side. And I will flip this around so you can see. And then all you do is you tape it. Oh, she's pretty. Okay, she's not balanced, okay? So there's some black, like more black on this side. So we definitely still mess, need to mess around with that. But you can see she's so pretty. Okay, but you see what I'm talking about um, with her neck? I almost feel like this needs to go up a little bit and then have a little blue that matches her earrings and the shoulder puffs. <laughs> and that would be an easy piece to cut. Um, I'm gonna do that in design space and, and finish that for the final, final product. All right, so now that you have everything, now you wanna look and you want to make sure that everything is proportionate. Uh, the black outline is the same everywhere. And then you start to tape down. And I won't tape the whole thing and record it because I think it's kind of boring, but I will tape down a little bit so that you could see. And usually what I do is I tape down a big piece so probably in this case, maybe I'll start with the two shoulders and go in. Um, and I kind of want to leave this neck area like this because I'm going to cut that piece after. Um, okay, so as I was saying with putting things down, I use double-sided tape for almost everything. The only time that I break out my hot glue gun is when I'm putting the whole thing on the foam board or if I have glitter on glitter. So for instance, if this is glitter, if she had like a hair piece that goes on top of it, I would use um, the hot glue gun because the double-sided tape doesn't work that well when it's glitter on glitter. Okay, so I have this. This is ready to be taped down. 
All you do is um, you use the double-sided tape, so just regular scotch tape. I use glue dots for really small pieces, and I use the tape runner, the double-sided tape runner, um, also where it's like um, kind of thin and I can't get a good piece of tape because you don't want the tape to show at all. It will show against the black background. So you need everything to be within that piece. Um, all right, so let me just show you one. I mean, it's really super simple, double-sided tape. I, um, you know, like make sure that I like where it is and then I hold down one side and I tape one side and then I tape the other side. I'm just super paranoid about the thing moving and then trying to figure out where it should go again. And then now that that side's taped down, I still just hold it a little bit. I'm like just really gentle with these pieces because they're usually intricate cuts and it's glitter cardstock and I just don't want to mess up. So now that piece is down and you're just going to go through the whole thing. So in the meantime, I'm going to stop the video. I'm going to make that little choker. I don't think it's going to distract from the whole thing. Um, so I hope I don't get like the crazy enthusiasts that say I messed up this image, but I will do that. And then I wanted to show you if you watched what I did in Design Space with this, and then at the end when I go to click make it, and then I move all the pieces around to save cardstock. So this is my blue. So I moved everything. So now the, for my next project, whatever I use, um, I have a usable space and it's easy for me to calculate like, you know, where it should go. So you says, see, this is my blue and look at my white. I've been using my white over and over and over. So her eyes this time was right here. And I only did this because, <coughs> excuse me, I didn't want to try to figure out which one was the left eye, which was the right eye. So I did that. But see, um, the eyes are usually so small. I'm going to have this space next time to use this over here and this over here. So this has been used multiple times. And same thing with the blue. So you can see now, like, I have, you know, this half. It's much more usable when you move things. Um, same with her hair. Her hair would have fit all on here as is with the two tendrils. But now I have this whole usable space um, and the tendrils are up here. And you can see this I've used multiple times. This was someone's mouth, flounder's mouth, and then this is her lips. So I really do save these and use it. The other tip that I wanna talk about is skin color. So, um, and which cardstock to use. I normally don't use glitter cardstock for the um, skin um, because everything else is glitter, so and I think it's okay. So, um, but for Jasmine, because she was a little bit darker and I didn't have nice cardstock, I found this one, which I absolutely love. This is not glitter cardstock, but it is um, shimmer paper from Cricut. It comes in this bedazzled sampler, and this is the pink. It's gorgeous. Let me, if you haven't seen Jasmine up front. Everything about Jasmine though, this color combination, and her eyes and you know her super red lips i mean she's just gorgeous there is a seam right here and i'll point it out so that you can try to see it it's barely noticeable so she just looks amazing the black cardstock obviously has seams there's a seam right here i can feel it but it's hard to tell with glitter cardstock so it's definitely worth the price to, I mean, if you're already making this, you've already spent at least two hours doing it, if not three. Um, I'm in between two and three hours. I think Cinderella, because she was so easy, was um, close, I think under two hours. Um, but this is, I mean, this is just, I just love her. And then Belle, and you can see I propped her up, it was pretty easy. Um, Belle, I use cardstock, and I don't know, can you see? It's kind of hard because it looks like they're the same color, but they are not. I did use different color cardstock, just a shade darker or more pinkish for Belle. And I did that, um, I went with that because Cinderella already has the blue and her eyes are blue. Um, I felt like she could go with the, with the lighter color. Belle is a little washed out, so Belle, I actually changed her lips to, to red. Um, she used to have these pink lips. The picture showed pink, but I will show you. 
it was, I mean, it's pretty in person when you're super close up, but I felt like she was so washed out that this looked better. So um, I do make some adjustments, but I, I really try to stay true to the actual images. So, oh, okay. Um, all right, oh, but this is the cardstock that I use. I always wait till it goes on sale. I get it for between, um, if I get a really good sale, it's like $4.60 plus tax. Um, if I don't, it's anywhere between five and six dollars. Regular price is 19 or $20, so I definitely don't buy it then. I mean, I will wait. I won't do a project unless, of course, I have to fulfill an order. But this is the Wedding Neutrals package. It is from Craftsmith. I saw another one that I think I could use, and I think it was called the Blush Pad. But anyway, so you can kind of see it's, it ranges from pink, peach, to like even like a um, definitely darker pink, but there are some shades in here that are great for the skin. So I use this, like I said, for Cinderella and for Belle. All right. Hi, it's Anne. Thanks for joining on this lovely Friday. Um, so I have knocked out Cinderella from design space, enlarging it in there, slicing to taping it all down, all that's left is the foam board. And so you can see this stuff can be done relatively quickly. I started this morning between the videos, eating breakfast. Um, so I would say this one was definitely one of my easier ones because she is practically seamless. What I love about her is that there's, um, the way the design and the picture was, is that everything is within a 12 by 12 cardstock. So this, her neck, so it's seamless because I didn't have to cut it. The only thing that I did have to cut was the black background. So we covered almost the entire black cuts. Unfortunately, I didn't realize this and I'm kind of kicking myself. There is a line going through the eye and of course the eye has all these open black spaces. So I'm bummed about that. But other than that, the seams are so small. Like that is what, like a quarter of an inch, you can't even see it. I mean, I just absolutely love this picture and her hair and everything is so pretty. Um, all right, so let's, I'm gonna show you the outline, how I do the foam um, cutout. The foam board is from Dollar Tree, so it's just a dollar. Um, I don't, I mean, it's just such a good price. I can't even imagine trying to find something better. I mean, not price-wise, but even quality-wise, I'm not sure it's worth it, right? Because you're either going to, most of my customers either hang this up in the bedroom after the party, so the cardboard is just to make it a little, you know, not flimsy, that's all, but you're gonna be hanging it, um, and then usually it's propped up at the cake table, which is like this, so you can see they can stay propped up by themselves with just this foam board. So, all right, so let's do that. This one's great too because we don't need to piece anything together. If you saw my assembly for um, Ariel, I did, and let me just show you. Um, so Ariel, because she's so wide, um, I had to, for the foam board, I had to cut a piece and glue it on right here. But you can't tell at all, and like, look at her, she's like, not flimsy at all and she you know stands perfectly fine like so so i love this one too and just her hair even though you can see there's a seam right there but i think because she's so and you can see it right here i thought about putting flowers or something but i feel like that would just call more attention to it she shimmers so much and she's so gorgeous that i don't think anybody cares about that, but you let me know what you think. Um, so this, I'm gonna be sad when all these go. Um, these were the first few that I did, and so I kept them because I was still learning and they're not perfect, and if you see them up close, you'll see why. But my princesses have a final destination, so I'm gonna be so sad when they all go. Um, all right, let me see if I can put this back up quickly. 
Alrighty, so what you wanna do is I just grab a pencil and I'm gonna trace the outline and then, um, and then I'm gonna use my Cricut knife and cut inside the lines. Um, I try to stay close depending on the project. This one, she's gonna be resting, you know, like just think about how she's gonna be propped up, right? So we wanna make sure that this piece right here is almost flushed with the cardboard because we need to give it something for her to rest on this point right here. Everything else is, is not really gonna to touch, so it's gonna be okay if it stays inside, but we're really gonna to wanna to hit that corner or, or that bottom part really well. So I'm going to, I'm gonna make it flushed as I can right now to just the edge. And then I'm gonna just um, do my outline. I probably should have moved it over, but that's okay. Like I said, this piece, um, that's gonna be our only important part. Um, the other thing I wanna talk about while I'm tracing this, and there's, you can just watch, um, is I've gotten a lot of questions about the skin color and what color cardstock am I using. So I, um, I think it's worth it to do glitter cardstock for all the colors, except for the black background. The only time that I've done black glitter cardstock is for Jasmine because her hair plays such a big part um, in the whole image that I wanted to do that. Um, but for the most part, the black cardstock is just whatever is on sale at Michael's or Joann's. I never buy full price on paper. Um, I have to do too many of these to do that. Um, and then all the color pieces, like I said, are Cricut glitter cardstock. I use Cricut because I've noticed that it sheds the least um, and it really shimmers. I did Rainbow Dash and you know, Rainbow Dash with the tail, I did all those colors in glitter cardstock and I was shocked at how little it shined. I used some other glitter that I got on sale and it just, it just didn't do it for me. So. The skin though, the skin I usually do regular cardstock. So this is from Craftsman. I buy these like crazy when they go on sale because they're normally what, 19 or $20 at Joann's or Michael's. I wait till they go on sale and I've gotten them as cheap as like four something for the whole pad and it's 48 pages. Um, and I pay up to $6, maybe seven if I really need it and I can't wait for the sale but that's so rare. Um, this is the Wedding Neutrals package. Um, from this one, I don't know what these colors are. I don't think they name them anywhere, but I did use Cinderella as one color and I used Belle as a different color because I knew this was going in a set and I didn't want them to all just be one tone. So, oh, and I used Ariel. I don't remember which one I used. I mean, it was just one of these that I just thought felt and look good. Um, but Jasmine, I use this, which everyone thought was glitter cardstock. It's actually shimmer paper. It's from Cricut, it's in the Bedazzled Sampler, and it's the pink one, although it's not pink. It's like very peachy bronze. I don't know if that's a good description. But anyway, just wanna let you know that. Um, all right, so I finished tracing. And see, she's all, she's so pretty. And look how big she is in comparison to me. So just imagine this birthday party for, uh, my, my daughter's four. So her next birthday party at five, these are huge. I've had her sit on top of this and it's like her whole, her whole body. So they look amazing and it's such a wow factor. Okay, here is our outline. Hopefully you can see, I'm trying to see if I can see it. But here's the outline. Remember, the only thing that's important is this bottom part. So I'm gonna try to do that first while I still have energy. Um, I'm gonna try to stay as close as possible and just do it in one smooth cut. And I do like my Cricut knife. 
I also really like my self healing mat. It's 24 by 36 and I just cut straight on here. And I start to take the pieces off, like I'll just cut to the edge because um, it's just easier for me to maneuver. My husband's like, don't you think you should be more practical? I'm like, it's a dollar. Mm, no. <laughs> All right. I'm so excited to see all of these next to each other. And I will do, I'll post it on Facebook and also on my Instagram. I will go over it with my video, like super close up so that you could see, you can look for the seams. I mean, I just, these have been so awesome. I've just absolutely loved them. Loved working on it. Um, I finally have an order. Well, I did the Spider-Man and that one was quickly sold. And that one um, was beautiful. It was, oh, I did use black glitter cardstock on that one and it was pretty amazing. My husband was even impressed. Um, but I finally have an order for a boy's birthday and it's gonna be the cars theme. So I'm, I'm gonna kinda miss the, the girly stuff for a little bit. And you can see I'm being super careless. I'm just doing one big like oval. And I'm just going to cut this off so that I can... Just a little bit easier for me to maneuver now, now that it's only half. Okay. Um, okay, so you can see I'm going relatively quickly. The only time I was super careful was at that bottom because I knew she didn't have much of a propping space. Just that one piece, so. All right. So here we have it. Um, make sure I don't stab myself while I'm recording. Okay. And I want this to be flush, so you can kind of see me kind of feeling it out. Um, so you can, you can kind of see it right here. So I need to trim that down. And I'm gonna trim a little bit right here. So, and I'm not super careful when I'm doing this. I sort of just wanna get a piece off and it's just because it would have been fine but it was the way I angled my cut and so you could see it um okay so that looks good now and then so I'm just gonna cut a little bit right here you can see it So I think she's pretty good right here. I'm just gonna do, a, it's so thin, but I'm just going, and I can see, I, I can still see the pencil mark. So clearly I, I didn't cut very well right there. Okay, so now that's good. Okay, I'm gonna glue her down. So I already have my hot glue gun going. And I'm gonna start with this shoulder right here. So I do one piece at a time. I try to glue like a lot and, and not worry about it. So you just, you'll see. I don't even think we need this much. On some of them I have done just um, double-sided tape. 
so I know it works fine. I haven't had any complaints, and some of these I've had for a long time too, just here at the house. So, um, all right, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lift this up and do this bottom portion. Oh, my stand just came off. second and then I'm going to do her other shoulder and um, let me show you what it looks like from behind so see she's okay all right um so as I place this I think it moved a little bit I'm going to back up in there um I'm gonna just trim off this little little it's like a millimeter of that okay Okay, and there's just one thing I want to address. So, over here there's a seam, and I must have gotten glue on one piece but not the other piece, so now it's like popping up. So I think what I need to do, I didn't press this down hard enough, okay. I'm gonna try to glue this down a little bit more. Okay. I'm pressing it down. It, the glue is totally oozing out, but you know, you can just peel it off afterwards. Not a big deal. So you can kind of see, can you see it's all like, but it's totally fine. All right, so I'll just wait for that to dry. I'll dry it this way so it can, whoa. Okay. And then I just want this off before it sticks to other things, but um, you know with the glue gun, it's really easy to get off, so. All right, so it's all off. Let's continue. Um, so pretty much at this point, I feel like it's just her head. What I want to do, oh my gosh, I keep seeing little pieces of white. Let me trim off this piece right here. Okay, that's all good. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is going to be one big piece, and I'm looking at my glue gun. It needs more glue, but it's not going to take because it's not a lot of glue that um, I room for that. So I'm just going to have this ready to go. So I'm gonna glue down a lot. I'm gonna glue here. I'm probably gonna stop half at her face. Sorry, let me move this up. I'm gonna stop right around here and hopefully I can stick in my glue gun and then do the rest. So. Okay. And then yeah, now I have enough room, okay. Let that dry a little bit. Okay, everything is down. This is looking so good. She's been so easy in comparison to my aerial. My aerial was like bonkers. It spanned three days. I mean, obviously I didn't work on it all three days, um, but it took a couple hours each day and I just walked away from it. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I'm gonna glue this last part. All right. And we're done. So, so she's gonna be propped up like this. She's gonna need some help because she, you know, obviously it's gonna roll like this. But if it was just like this, she will prop up against the wall. Let me see if I can find a spot for her right now. She might need to take Belle's place. So she props up with that other shoulder pad. <laughs> but you can see she's 
comparable to her and comparable to Jasmine, even though size-wise she's a lot smaller than Jasmine, okay? So, all right, thank you so much for joining. I will post better pictures so that you can really look for the seams. I'm, I'm excited to do that because we've just done a great job with all of these princesses. So, all right, have a great weekend. Thank you for joining, I really appreciate it.